Welcome to the first refactoring, where we'll increase the code's intuitiveness by making some of the variable names more meaningful. In the first video in the series, we're going to start slowly. We'll use the rename and introduce constant refactorings to make the code easier to read, as well as to make it more intuitive. Let's begin. Here at the top of the handle method, we have two variables, dir, which is the name of the directory that stores the parcel tracking data files, and PID, which stores the parcel tracking number extracted from the current request. Now, I don't know about you, but if no one had explained the purpose of these variables to me, their specific purpose wouldn't seem all that obvious, at least at first. So let's rename them to something more meaningful. Let's start with DIR. This name is too vague. Yes, DIR typically stores a directory name, but in this case, what specifically is being stored in that directory? Let's rename it to something that's more intuitive. Now, I could do this manually, such as by highlighting all the requests here. Alternatively, I could find in files, and you can see here a nice list comes up. But what if, for example, I thought I was selecting everything, but I had a file mask in place such as something like .php. And so I'd only selected those kinds of files, but I'd missed something in, say, a documentation file. And depending on the size of the code base, and perhaps the time of day and how tired you might be feeling, it's likely that that might happen at least once or twice, probably resulting in some broken code. So instead, I'm going to use phpstorm to take care of finding and replacing every occurrence for me. To do that, I'm going to come over here to DIR. I'm going to right click on it, come down to refactor, then come over to rename to start a rename refactor. Now a rename refactor, as the name implies, allows us to rename a symbol such as a variable, constant, class, and method, as well as files and directories to make them more intuitive, more meaningful, and more representative of their purpose. Now, as you can see here, PHP Storm offers a list of potential new names, but none of them seems quite appropriate to me, especially the first one, as it's the current variable name. Now, two more meaningful names might be parcel tracking data directory or parcel tracking data file directory. However, let's rename it to parcel data file dir. Note that as I was renaming it, all of the uses that are currently in view were being simultaneously renamed. I think that's a nice visual confirmation of what we're doing. Now, before we move on to rename PID, you can view all of PHP Storm's refactorings by using the Control T keyboard shortcut. And you can see here, rename, move instance method, copy file, and so on. Alternatively, if you are just looking for say rename, you could use the search anywhere dialog and type in rename. And you see here that the first entry in the list is the rename refactor. Okay. Next, let's rename PID so that it communicates that it stores a parcel ID. Now, this time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of Shift F6 to start the rename. Now you can see that as I've started the refactor, as before is popped up a list of potential names. But this time I'm gonna press Shift F6 again and a rename dialog appears. I find this approach to often be the better choice as it can be all too easy to accidentally close the pop-up, whereas you have to intentionally press escape or click the cancel button to close this dialog. Now, if I click on the down arrow here, you can see that the same list of potential names is populated as we saw previously. However, none of the suggestions really fits. So I'm going to manually change PID to parcel ID because PID could easily be confused for a variable that stores a Linux or Unix process ID if you're familiar with Linux and Unix parlance. Now next, note the two checkboxes at the bottom of the dialog. If you don't use these, then only references to PID in PHP code will be refactored. However, we might have referenced this variable in one or more doc block comments or in the documentation, such as a markdown, ASCII doc, or restructured text file. So I'm going to leave them checked. And with that done, I'm going to click preview to open the refactoring preview window. Now note here at the top is the variable that's being renamed. And underneath it 
is a tree view containing a list of usages which PHP Storm has identified as being potential replacements for that variable throughout the code base. This is handy for ensuring that the refactor will not change unrelated references such as in Compose's vendor directory. Now, there aren't many usages in this list and it's handily been expanded out already so you can see all of them. If I click on any of them, we'll see the identified line in the code containing the reference to PID. If I didn't want to change one or more usages, I could right click on it, such as this example, and then I could click exclude, and that would take it out of the refactor. Alternatively, I could remove it and that completely removes it from the refactor that we'd run. So I'll do that just to highlight that. And you can see here that it's struck through. If I wanted to put it back in, I'd click include, now note one thing, as I quickly exclude all references, here it says exclude all. Note that all the way up the tree, everything is struck through. So that's another visual confirmation that nothing from this point downwards is going to be included. So I'll just quickly put those back in. Now with them back in, I'm happy with what will be changed. So I'm gonna come down here and click do refactor at the bottom of the refactoring preview window and the refactoring has now been completed. Right, with that done, let's now perform a slightly more sophisticated rename by renaming Homepage Handler. Now this project started off by being generated by the Mezio Frameworks Skeleton Installer, which creates Homepage Handler to handle the default or home route. Well, since the route now handles requests to find parcels by their ID, I think it's fair to say that the class should be renamed to reflect that new functionality. So let's rename it to Parcel Tracker Handler as that's a more intuitive name. So to do that, I'm going to press F6 and then F6 again, and I'll rename that to Parcel Tracker Handler. Now, one thing that's worth being aware of is the rename scope, which you can see here at the bottom of the dialog. With this, we can limit the refactoring to areas such as recently changed files, scratch files, and open files. We can also create a custom scope that we can share or keep locally. So let's create a custom scope just for the test files of this module as an arbitrary example. To do that, I'll click the ellipsis button next to the scope dropdown. Then I'll come up to the top left corner, click the add scope button, and then click local, as I want this to be a local only scope. And I think a suitable name for our new scope would be module test files. Now, the next question is what files fall within that scope? So we need to determine that. To do that, I'll navigate here under the project structure until I'm down in the app test directory because hypothetically, they're the files that we want to include in this arbitrary scope. Then as I want all files from that directory downwards, I'm going to click include recursively which fills in the pattern field for us. With that done, here under the pattern field, you can see that the number of files covered in the scope has been updated. And to see just the included files, I'll click show included only. The reason why I'm doing that is sometimes if you're including say a number of directories and you have a number of patterns in the pattern field, it might be difficult to be completely sure if you're just including the files that you want. So by enabling show include only, you can help yourself to be sure that you only have the files that you want. As the scope's been completed, I'm gonna click apply and then okay. And the scope is now available to choose from at the bottom of the scopes list under other. That said, that was just an arbitrary example. So as I'm not gonna use, I'll scroll back up to the top and put it to all places. I'll leave all of the checkboxes checked and then click preview. At this point, a rename inheritors dialog appears. Now this helps us to confirm the action being taken. There's nothing to do here though, so I'm gonna click OK, which opens the refactoring preview window. This time there are a large number of usages found, far more than last time. But this gives us the perfect reason to have a deeper look at the buttons available down the left-hand side of the window. These allow us to rerun the preview, move to the previous or next usage, change the way that usages are grouped, such as by directory or file structure, module and usage type, show and hide read and write access, and usage statements, 
and self references, expand and collapse all references and change preview settings. But scrolling here reasonably quickly, having a rough scan on the files that are available within the refactoring preview, I'm happy that there are no false positives. So I'm going to finish the refactor by clicking do refactor. And now that that's done, I'm going to quickly rename Homepage Handler Factory as it's responsible for instantiating Homepage Handler. So logically, its name should remain in sync with Homepage Handler's new name. And I'm going to do this here in the project list. This time, I'll select the file's name and I'm going to press Shift F6, which opens up a rename dialog. I'm going to change Homepage Handler Factory to Parcel Tracker Handler Factory. I'll leave everything else as it is and then click Refactor. Then I'll click OK in the bottom of the rename class dialog, which finishes the refactor. For the first hands-on video in the series, that seems like a good place to stop. So let's quickly recap what we've done. We've renamed DIR to Parcel Data File DIR. We've renamed PID to Parcel ID. We've renamed Homepage Handler to Parcel Tracker Handler. And we've renamed Homepage Handler Factory to parcel tracker handler factory. In doing all these things, we've made the code more intuitive and also made it much clearer in its intent. In the next video, we're going to learn how to use two more refactorings. These are introduce field to further clean up parcel data file DIR and introduce variable to convert the sprintf copy paste spaghetti into a reusable variable. I'll see you then.